Well, good to see you, friends. A blessed day to you whenever you're catching up with me here at our devotionals on our YouTube channel. Today is the 3rd of December. It's Thursday. And as I promised, we're starting a new series. It's a series that's using Advent as our foundation and basis. And more specifically, it's the message of Christmas as we take a look at the different Sundays that are represented in the Advent wreath. So many of us are in the habit of putting together an Advent wreath at Christmas. It includes greens and sometimes lights and sometimes, depending on how fancy you want to get, berries or holly or different kinds of poinsettia leaves and such. But the main concept there is that this is a, a way to remember and commemorate and celebrate the coming of Christ. There are four candles in the traditional Advent wreath. And so we're going to take a week that's mm, somewhere between, I think, about five days without weekends. And we're going to study some scriptures that have to do with what a particular candle represents. So there are four candles. The first candle is hope of the prophets. So you may call it, you may have heard it called the, the hope candle or the prophets candle. Well, it's really the, both of those things, hope of the prophets. That's where we're gonna to begin today. The next week, we're gonna look at the second candle that's the faith lived by Mary and Joseph's pilgrimage to Bethlehem. So you may have heard it called the faith candle or the Bethlehem candle, same difference. Week three, we're going to look at the joy of the shepherds. So it's called the shepherd's candle or the candle that represents joy. And then week four, it's peace told through the angels. And we're actually going to cheat a little bit and uh, go past Christmas. Uh, the nativity of our Lord uh, into the first day of January. So that's actually post-Advent and into Christmas. Anyway, that's, that's what's set up for us in the next four weeks. And then I've already put together an outline for Christmas and Epiphany. Those are the seasons before Lent. And we're going to look at Jesus as wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, and prince of peace. So that's where we're going. Glad you're with us. Let's jump right into it. Hope of the prophets. The prophet's candle was lit this last Sunday, reminding us of the prophetic hope regarding the Messiah, captured in scripture in the prophets, and then fulfilled by Jesus, who was born in the manger. And I don't know about you, but I see Advent as a time of or a season of hope. When I was growing up, especially as I remember my first year in college at California State University, Long Beach, I had made some bad decisions that semester. And I was kind of in a place as Advent started where I felt out of place. I had joined a fraternity. I had gotten involved in school. Uh, I should say extracurricular school, not school itself. No, I was enjoying the freedom that I didn't have to go to class. Nobody took attendance. The problem with that is that you don't learn very much and then you don't do well on the exams or the essays you have to write. But about the time Advent came around, I knew that I was living outside of God's plan for me. And it was the season of Advent that drew me back to the church, to relationships there. I went and saw my youth pastor. In counsel with him, I decided to resign my place at the fraternity and, and really pour myself back into the faith that I grew up in. And 
that wasn't the only time that I had to come back to faith, but it was the first significant time that I had to come back to faith. And I, I just remember that season being very hopeful. Things weren't as they were supposed to be, but I was hopeful that things would soon be back to the way they should be. The infancy narrative of Jesus, the Messiah, is just wrought with hope. And Isaiah 9 captures this prophetic message well. And so in the time of Isaiah, we catch up with an Israel that is in desperate need of hope. And by the time the Messiah came, Jesus was born, they, they, the people, had not seen a prophet for 400 years. And so you can imagine that the people were parched for God. They so desired him. And so in the time of the writing of Isaiah, and here's the prophet speaking of the hope of the Messiah that is then fulfilled in Jesus. So I'll start at verse 2 in Isaiah. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light is dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as the people rejoiced at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, every warrior's boot used in battle, and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel then for the fire. And then here's verse 6, where I want to spend our time on a little bit today. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will call, be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. What a hopeful passage, don't you think? And a reminder that we have hope in this Advent season. That in this child who was born in very humble setting here in the manger in Bethlehem, the hope of the world had come. They didn't know it. The people in Isaiah's time, as the prophecy was given, didn't know it. There are many today who have no clue of the gift God gave us well over now, 2,000 years ago, in that quiet stable to Mary and to Joseph on that fateful day that Jesus was born. And so this, friends, I want to encourage you. This is the hope that we receive. The hope was prophesied in Isaiah, fulfilled in Jesus, and received still today. So as we enter into Advent together, I would encourage you, especially now, when we're stuck in the in the middle of a pandemic, when we've just been through a, a very angry and bitter election, when the world seems to be hopeless, cling on to the hope of the coming of Christ, knowing that, that in that manger, God was establishing his kingdom of both now and forever. There'll be more on this, this particular passage from Isaiah 9 in the future as we look at some of these texts, and certainly in our next series during Christmas and Epiphany. Uh, but for now, I'll leave you in this place of hope. Let's pray. 
Thank you, God, that you sent the prophets to give words of hope. Help us as we begin this study in Advent to cling to hope. Lord, we know that a light has come into this great darkness and it continues to come. And it comes again and it comes again and he will come in the end that the darkness would be dispelled once and for all. Help us to live into this hope born in the manger. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy Thursday, everybody. Great to be with you. Tomorrow's Friday. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.